Welcome back, and joining me in studio again is JB. Welcome, JB. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm glad you're here, man. We have lots to talk about with our last episode. We came into so many things we could uh, discuss here, and uh, we started talking about end times and what that means, and what I want to do is dial back a little bit and talk about uh, certain things. Or what, you know, In my podcast, in, in the beginnings, I'm staying in the Old Testament, and um, that is painting the picture for... Uh, revelation and tying it to uh, the prophecy from the Old Testament that into the New Testament. So what I'd like to do with you is go back to the book of Daniel, which is a very powerful book, and start looking at how the picture was being painted thousands of years before we see what's going on now. What do you think? All right. Sounds good. That's right, definitely so, an exciting book. Yeah. You've read you've read Daniel. Oh, yeah, I've read Daniel. I've seen the musical years ago and uh, very action-packed. Right. A lot going on in Daniel. It's like the the book of prophecy. Right. Yeah, that's good. And like I said, you know, my, my stuff in, in in school when I was getting my Ph.D. was, was based a lot on Daniel and Revelation. So uh, I know a lot of people have questions, and we've been jumping around uh, with, no, uh, with no really... Uh, the problems with with how we talk about it but I, I think we should start to to line this up for everyone um yeah i've been kind of all over the place a little no, bit but I, me too so <laughs> it's 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 fine um so let's jump back to the book of daniel um so what, what you hear about daniel what you know for people that are not church goers or are not you know reading their bible you know what 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 comes to mind when you hear daniel or the book of daniel oh uh, well if you if I hear the the name of the book of Daniel, I think right away end times. Okay. Do you think? All right. What do you think about? What do I think about Daniel? Yeah. No, I mean, what a part? What part of end times? Oh. Um, oh, wow! You put me on the spot. I'm not really uh, sure. Gotcha. You know, it's been so long. It's been so long since I studied the book of Daniel. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember the story of Daniel. I remember how. Um, uh, a lot of the the um, the oppression that he went through when he was basically in captivity, right? Uh, from the uh, oh, the, from the captors, <laughs> <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. That's what you're looking for. Ne- no, but I was oh. the Persians, right? Yeah, yes. Wasn't it, weren't they under Persian uh, captivity? They were well, enslaved by the Persians. Well, what happens is, uh, we're, well, let's give you a timeline. So we're looking at 540, uh, 530, five, between 530, 540 BC. So we're way back there, right? <laughs> I'm so, laughing about captain, <laughs> captain, captain, the, the captain. <laughs> well, that's who got him. Good so. save. <laughs> <laughs> so it's now we're, let's jump up. 605 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, who is the king of Babylon, um, conquers Judah and he deports many of the inhabitants uh, to Babylon, which includes Daniel, right? So uh, Daniel uh, eventually, I don't want to you know, spoil it all because I want you to read the book, but Daniel actually becomes, he serves on the royal, the royal court of Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, he's there with sev- several other rulers. Uh, so, so the book of Daniel talks about uh, a lot of prophecy, a lot of vision, um, and Nebuchadnezzar, what's going on is Nebuchadnezzar is having a lot of dreams that he doesn't know the answers to. So uh, he's looking for somebody to tell him and to interpret his dreams, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Okay, so uh, we'll start out in, in the first chapter of Daniel. Um, the king is looking for uh, somebody to tell him about. Yeah, He's looking for wisdom and understanding about, you know, what is going on and what he what he's dreaming about and the only one you know not not to not to spoil alert it but you know daniel uh rises up okay so to, to make it <laughs> yeah i, I remember what point. happened but i didn't want to i didn't want to do any spoilers either i'm trying to think how i can describe this and not spoil it because i want people to know uh you know to read it and, and you know you hear Daniel in the lion's den. Yes. You hear Daniel um, in the lion's den. That you know that's probably a, a common thing people probably think that's of. Probably, when they if think you're of not Daniel. familiar with the Bible, I'm sure most people have heard and I Daniel in the lion's den. I don't want to get us too off, too sidetracked here, but you know this story this this really reminds me of Joseph and the Pharaoh. 
How so? Oh, for the dreams. With the dreams, the, and he uh, the he fatted cows. And he had that, him interpret yeah. the dreams for him. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of similar in some ways. The only difference is I don't think uh, Pharaoh tried to kill him after he interpreted his dream. Well, that's ooh, ooh, spoiler alert. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, what's happening is um, Nebuchadnezzar dreams of a large statue. Um, which is awesome in appearance. It's described as awesome in appearance. Um, and, and I think maybe we should break down. Do you want to do what the interpretation was? I, how do I not spoil this for people? <laughs> should I tell them well, what the dreams were, or what, what they were, what they consisted of? I don't want to be one to assume, but let's just assume for a second that a lot of people listening in probably are familiar with this book. So, it's really not that big of a deal, I think, if you throw in a couple of spoilers here I think and there. It's not bad. Okay. Now, all right. So, chapter one. Let, let's go there. Chapter one describes uh, the the conquest, like I said, of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, and um, Daniel and three of his friends are deported to uh, to Babylon because of their courage, and, and you know God was with them, of course, and, and they end up being in the king's uh, service, right? So you go into chapter two, chapters two through four you see that Nebuchadnezzar is having a dream that only Daniel can correctly interpret, right? So Nebuchadnezzar's dream uh, of the statue, uh, I guess we'll spoil it. It represents the kingdoms that will arise in the future, right? So Nebuchadnezzar had a great statue of himself and he forced everyone to worship it uh, back in the day. So now if you're not, again, familiar with uh, this this is where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that story of the fiery furnace, this is where it's all coming together still, Book of Daniel. So this large statue that he makes everybody worship, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego refused to it and uh, refused to worship it and um, uh, spoil that one too. Uh, they're miraculously saved um, after being thrown in the fiery furnace. You remember that story, right? Oh, yes. Okay. He, so... Uh... I don't remember why he was thrown in the in the furnace. I I don't know if that was because he didn't like the interpretation of his dream. No, the, those three were thrown in because they wouldn't worship his statue. Oh, uh, okay. King, King Nebuchadnezzar had the statue of himself. They wouldn't worship it because he demanded everybody worshipped him as a god, and those three refused. And they were for for refusing, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. If you remember that part. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, where are we at? So, uh, a lot of terms like in this book, you'll, you'll hear the writing is on the wall that, that, the uh, that, um, common, common, uh, it's like a of, cliche or yeah, a saying, cliche, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's saying the writing's on the wall. Well, that story happens in the book of Daniel. And that literally, um, there literally was writing on the wall though. That's right. So, so it's, uh, uh, that's a, a message from God is written on the wall. Uh, only Dan only Daniel can interpret the message um, and, it, and it tells of a coming judgment from God right so uh, after that Daniel's thrown into the lion's den for refusing to pray to the emperor like he was told to do um, so God gives Daniel a vision of four beasts right the four the four beasts were are gonna uh, represent the kingdoms of Babylon and Medo-Persia Greece and Rome Right. So did I lose you yet? Are we here? <laughs> Are you there? Well, I'm still here. <laughs> all, right, so, all right. It's a lot to, to go through. So um, God gives Daniel basically a timeline of when the Messiah would come uh, and be cut off. Right. So he talks about a future ruler who will make a seven year covenant with Israel and break it after three and a half years, followed shortly by uh, great judgment. Um, uh consummation of all things uh daniel's visited by an angel that gives him strength throughout it um you know and, and you see now now this this story is painting the picture of uh antichrist and that's where revelation is drawn into how you know the the rising of the kingdom uh the rising of antichrist and the actual um agreement made between israel and it's a seven-year peace treaty and three and a half years into it it is broken Right. So now we can tie. Rev, this is where the tie from Revelation is, you know, back to Daniel. Daniel, is, it's in this book where we hear about um, this happening in the beginning. Right. Makes sense. Yes. All right. <laughs> so uh, Daniel and the Lions, then uh, it, 
it's that's a great story so read that read the circumstances uh that that go on that um that go on in there because that in itself is a miraculous story you know there's, oh, so, no doubt. there's so many things uh in that in that book of daniel that it's because there's a couple of things because I'm, I'm sure you know antagonists over the year might have said like well maybe the maybe the lions weren't hungry or yeah, yeah. whatever the case is but what we need to keep in mind and keep in perspective that I'm sure that these lions were probably kept specifically for this, for oh, eating, yeah, for, for eating, eating prisoners. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, they probably were kept underfed yeah. so that they were hungry and nasty all the time. Yeah. And they probably had a taste for people because they probably were fed people on a regular basis. So the fact that Daniel was thrown in there and he left in one piece was definitely the workings of God. <laughs> and what you'll find out is that Nebuchadnezzar really, really likes Daniel. And this is like torture for him because uh, he, he proclaims that anybody worshiping anybody else other than who he tells them to worship is uh, uh, punishable by death. So he's thrown into the lion's den as a punishment. However, Daniel's the only one on the king's court that, can, that has actually helped the king. He actually becomes, uh, you know, I don't want to say friendship or affectionate, but he likes Daniel. Yeah, he's favored. Know? Right. Uh, kind of like with um, with Pharaoh and Joseph. Yes. Uh, and Joseph became an honored uh, guest, an honored member of the court. Yes. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> it, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, similarities. Yeah. It, it's uh I, and and I, I'm listening to you, but I'm looking. I'm I'm trying to decide if I want to describe his dream in detail because there's a number of dreams, uh. But the 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 interpretation of the statue is um creepy. Something that's it's it's creepy and it's I mean when he describes what happens, I mean by the end of the book, the 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 final um the I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. I, go to the book of Daniel. Okay, so we're <laughs> we're in we're in the Old Testament, right? There's 66 books of the Bible. Uh, you're in the 39 of them are uh, Old Testament, and Daniel's book 27. Yeah, just shut right? the show off completely and yeah. just, just read. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. And then, what are you doing, Doctor Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's a good you don't have story, to worry about you know? being canceled we're canceling ourselves yeah, i just tell you don't, <laughs> turn this off and read the bible hey if they turn this off and read the bible it's a win sure you, you yeah. know so but, but you know what yeah don't you know don't worry about the spoilers because i think that a lot of people that are tuning in probably are familiar with the bible and you're right you're right we're just given our perspective on it and uh i think yeah if you have to jump around a little bit that's all right yeah i think it'll be okay all right, so there's the, the dream of the statue, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, statue is very bright. It's uh, you know, and this is Daniel's interpretation. He said, "You had a vision, and now none of his quote unquote, uh, you know, uh, wise people or their uh, the magicians or the the fortune tellers, none of them can tell him what this means, right? Except Daniel now is telling him that you saw a large statue. The statue's it's bright. It stood in front of you. It's terrifying. Uh, the head of the statue was made of gold. The chest and the arms were made of silver. Its stomach and its hips were made of bronze and its legs were made of iron, right? The feet were made of, of iron and partly of clay. Um, so as he's watching uh, and as he's dreaming, um, a stone was cut out and, and it struck, it, it strikes the, the, uh, the statues iron and clay feet and smashes them then all at once the iron clay bronze silver and gold are all smashed right so they come crashing to the floor the wind carries them away and uh, that's his dream and it's uh, terrifying to him he doesn't know what it means um, so he asked Daniel and Daniel tells him that uh, that Nebuchadnezzar is the greatest king and the God of heaven gave him a kingdom right he's been given uh, power strength and honor um he he gave god gave him control over people animals birds whatever right so he made them so he nebuchadnezzar represents the the head of gold right so 
uh, another kingdom inferior to, to Nebuchadnezzar's will rise to power after you. And then there'll be a third kingdom, a kingdom of bronze that will rule the whole world. And then there'll be a fourth kingdom, right? The fourth kingdom will be strong as iron. And as iron crushes everything, the fourth kingdom will, will, will crush all other kingdoms, right? So he saw the feet and the toes. They were partly clay and partly iron. That means that the divided kingdom that was, uh, the, there's a divided kingdom that some of the, had some of the firmness of iron, but some of that iron was mixed with clay, right? So some of that kingdom will be strong and some of it will be brittle. Um, so part of the kingdom will, will, will mix with intermarrying and stuff like that. But, um, the iron, the iron itself, uh, from the legs, not, not mixed. Mm, interesting. Right. So are, are we there? Yeah. I still got you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, um, God, the God of heaven establishes a kingdom that will never be destroyed, right? So we're, we're talking about uh, the stone that, that hits the statue, um, smashes the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold. Uh, that is God telling Nebuchadnezzar what's going to happen in the future. He's saying that, um, that not only is his kingdom going to end, but it describes the kingdoms that follow after him right so uh nebuchadnezzar after hearing all this he, he bows down in front of daniel he orders gifts and, and makes sure daniel's taken care of um it, he knows that he's revealing a secret that nobody else uh could you know, you know what i mean so uh after that and this ties shadrach meshach and abednego um you know because because now daniel has told them the interpretation uh, Daniel appoints those three to govern the prince, of, you know, the uh, the province of Babylon. So they've gone from uh, being uh, the executive order given to to kill them to now they're in charge of Babylon. That's a great story. Uh, that that's I not, guess that's literally the definition of zero to hero. Zero to hero, right? So <laughs> I mean, and that was a very fast, fast interpretation of the dream. Um, the writing on the wall. Uh, you you need to dive into that book yourself and read it it's very very interesting everything that happens uh in the book of daniel is is very very interesting and captivating and the the greatest part is that we're now getting uh a, a broad stroke of uh what's what's being prophesied to happen at the end of the times right so yeah and what i would like more information on i'm not i don't remember if they, if they get into it in this book but what are those other kingdoms Oh, it does get into that. Does it? Okay. Yeah, we'll get into that, right. So I know it mentioned um, it does mention Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, right? Right. So he was the, the gold the gold head, the statue. So like the, the iron the iron was the Roman Empire, which came after them the iron was, was the, depicted as, you know, super strong. And the Roman Empire was a super strong empire. Oh yeah. Um they were mean, vicious, powerful and uh Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it does get into that. Uh, um, and, and historians, I mean, even if you go and Google uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel and, and the interpretation of dreams. Now, so many years later, you can look back and see what exactly each kingdom and, and rule that came after him was, you know. So uh, it's very interesting. Like I said, I don't want to take anything away from it and I don't want anybody. I mean, um, the dream of the four beasts, the ancient of days, the son of man. Um, Daniel, when, when he gets this distress, uh, his response to everything, um, uh, it, it's, it's super powerful book. Um, you're going to see when we start talking about revelation and the things that are talked, we're going to jump back to the book of Daniel and say, Hey, here in Daniel, it says this, and now here we are in revelation and here's how it ties. Yeah. I, I think that's part of what makes the book of Daniel so exciting is because, it's uh, because I think a lot of times when people think of um, the Old Testament, they think that it's just basically like a history book, like it's everything that had already happened. Right. But a lot of Daniel is futuristic. It hasn't even happened yet. A, a lot of a, a lot of it. Um, you know, you're you're seeing the, the like I said, the broad strokes of, of everything. That's what makes this book so powerful. You know, there are predictions in here and the prophecy in it and 99 percent of what's been prophesized to happen has already taken place and we're looking at this last one percent like hey you know it's uh you know when when is this because we're getting close you know what i mean 
So. Yeah, it, it it just I get this feeling like we're uh, we're at a, a slow boil. Yeah, like things are things are cooking it up. They're cooking up. So so just briefly, you know, in case uh, just to keep you interested, like the, so the golden head of the statue was uh, the kingdom of Babylon, right? Um, and then the silver torso was Medio Persia, which followed right after that, uh, where the Medes and the Persians ruled. Uh, from 539 to 331 BC, right? So the lower torso, the bronze was the Greeks uh, with Alexander the Great uh, when he when he conquered Medo, Medo-Persia. Um, Greeks remained in power until like 160, 160 BC. 160, I might be wrong, 170 BC. Um, and then the iron, iron of course, was Rome, uh, where Rome conquered the Greeks. And uh, the Roman Empire began to crumble. And um, that led into, you know, modern Europe, which is uh, Visigoths, Franks, Vandals, uh, Anglo-Saxons. Uh, I, I don't want to take too much into it, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Nobody, nobody's sleeping yet, are they? <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but Daniel 2.24 says, uh uh, a, a lot about you know the stone that that cuts into um, Nebuchadnezzar. See, Nebuchadnezzar at the time is the king of the world, right? Right. And, and he's the you know represented as the golden head on the statue, and uh, you know uh, unbearable. Or uh, you, you think you're invincible, you know, especially when you're the king. And uh, this 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 had to be a haunting dream where he's not only told of his his end of rule, but you know of all the the other kingdoms after him where he's just going to slowly melt away. You know what I mean? So, right. Like he's um, not even going to be a thought in anyone's yeah, mind. You know what I mean? So here he is thinking he's almighty and powerful and that he's going to rule forever. Right. And that is his legacy will live on through his descendants and right. No, your kingdom's going to end. Yeah. Uh, wipe your line out, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I think it was important that we, 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 we touch upon the book of Daniel. I could spend hours upon the book of Daniel just with, uh, you know, one story alone, like the lion's den and every aspect that went into, you know, Daniel, uh, you know, them being conquered, them being shipped off and, and them, you know, being a slave and a, ca- a captive of war and rising to, you know, not only, um, to save yourself, but now you're on the King's court, right? And now you're yeah. in charge and, uh, Oh, it's a powerful story. It's really cool. And I just, I think to myself how, how crazy it must've been living back then. If you're, if you're from the United States, cause most of the listeners of this show are from the United States. Although we do have some listeners in Poland. Yeah. Hello, Poland. Shout out to Poland. And we have some listeners in Vietnam. Hey, Vietnam. Shout out to them. But uh, for for most of our listeners that are from the United States, we've we've lived most of our lives very shielded from the scary realities of of war. Uh, you know, to some countries, war is the norm. Uh, and you know, you well, fig- especially Europe. I mean, every world war just devastated Europe. Yeah, you know. And you, you take, for example, a country like like Israel. Right. Uh, you go over in Israel. It's it's very normal to see uh, military patrolling, or just just on patrol, or just uh, just overseeing. Right. You know, it's uh, always on guard. Um. But going back to the the days of Daniel, you know, when when countries went to war, when they they got invaded, when they were captured by their captors. Right. Yeah, <laughs> well, they were they were dealt with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know it, it was horrible. You remember they? I, I know we we don't want to jump around too much. Spoiler alerts, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do that a lot. Go ahead, that's all right. You, you remember what they did to the? Uh, now I don't know if they. I don't think they did this to the women, but they did this to the men. You remember what they did? What? Tell me. I think they removed their eyeballs. Oh yeah. They did. They they were um, they were enslaving them. And they they were using the men as laborers, and I guess they felt they didn't need their eyeballs because they were they were chain they were like in a chain gang, right? right. They're all chained up, so all they needed was th- their muscles. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know, we don't we don't want to get into like what you know 
how they enslaved the women, but I, I'm pretty sure you can put that together yourself. Yeah, wasn't wasn't nice. No, it, it's very ugly. Um, they they suffered. You know, they they suffered tremendously. Yeah, and, and it's yeah, like you said, yeah, we've been very fortunate here. You know, just like you said, um, but it it's not. Uh, look what's going on right now. You go to sleep one day, the next day you're fleeing for your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything and, you have and own is gone. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, one to, to, you know, say anything that I'm not trying to put fear in anybody. What is this? this is not a fear campaign. Right. But we are living in um, times where we don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's, it's, we are living in very crazy times right now. And there's really no way to sugarcoat that. Right. Anyways, back to Daniel. Anyway, back to Daniel. So. <laughs> it's like a newscaster. Yeah, okay, yeah. Daniel over and there. And take and it away. Back to Daniel. <laughs> but the point of it is um, for us to move forward in, you know, Book of Revelation and to talk about, we're going to spend a lot of time about end times because, you know, nothing for nothing, nine out of ten people believe we're living them right now. So, uh, of course, there's speculation and, you know, you, you hear – um, everyone's, uh, objective, um, uh, you know, what, what they think is, is, is right and how they interpret it. And that's what makes this great is we can openly discuss it and, and figure it out. But, uh, are we living in the last days? Well, I mean, it, it's, it seems so. I mean, you know, as far as like, cause we, in one of the previous shows, we talked about the book of Timothy and, uh, I think it was actually, Wait a second. Is that uh no. That's I think it was the last the last show we talked about the book of Timothy and uh looking around and Oh yeah, yeah. uh what's going on yeah, as yeah. far as like disobedience and uh Oh yeah, yeah. That that scripture we read, yeah. Um lovers of money. Right. And while children going crazy. Yes. Yeah. And, and while <laughs> while that's actually been going on for the last 20 years because I I remember I remember going to church as a late teen and when i read that scripture i was like yeah that seems like it's going on now but oh, 20 yeah. years later it's just that much worse the right. disrespect of of kids towards their parents um it's really just vile it's getting to the point where it's just disgusting and vile now you know i i, I know disgusting and vile are kind of synonyms but vile is definitely way worse sounding than disgusting yeah and it is it is it is vile uh, the disrespect and uh, the when we touched on lovers of money in the previous episode where we um, it, it's not just the because we talked about the the opportunities how you have more opportunities to make money right and I think the idea of being able to make money has become a disease has become a sickness because it's it says lovers of money. It doesn't say people who have money or it doesn't say rich people, lovers of money, people who chase after money. Right. People who chase after money don't necessarily have any. Well, it's the love of money that's that's evil. It's right. Not, not, it's not money itself. It's it's the love of money. It's enslaving. Right. It so. becomes your master. Right. So it's, and, and, you know, we can. Back like to said, Daniel. Yeah, I was going back to Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be doing this all the time. Yeah, I do. That's what makes this show good, <laughs> you know. And, and you know the people that write in and, and and tell us that they like that. So I, I try not to spoil we, alert. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, everybody listening, Doctor Mike and I, we're actually people. So yeah, at least this this at least proves to you that we're not robots, just you know spitting out words. We're actually people, and yeah. And I'll tell you what got to me more was not somebody that was like a robot and talking to me and, and pounding things into my head. It was normal conversation about things and, hey, did you ever think this? Hey, what about this? And they broke it down to a very real level and a very, uh, maybe I'm not the smartest guy in the in the world. And they broke it down to my level where I'm like, you know what? Uh, uh, that makes sense. And, and now I, I have more questions and let me find out what else makes sense to me. You know, so um, if you're looking for someone to fire and brimstone, this isn't that podcast, you know. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, if you question anything that we say, maybe you disagree with it, then that's fine. Read the scripture. Yeah, I I, uh, I went to 
church, I went to this one church many years ago, and this pastor said to, said to us, read the scripture. Read along with me. Read the book. Te- put it to the test. If you, don't, if you disagree with something I said, read it in the scripture and tell me. Yeah. And so we encourage the same thing. You know, I'm not saying I'm not an expert at any of this, and uh, I'm giving you my viewpoints. And if you have a better viewpoint or maybe a better interpretation, maybe I'm not seeing something or maybe I'm overlooking something, bring it up, bring it to my attention. I'd love to hear it. Right. And that's what makes this great. You know, like, like the book says, iron sharpens iron. So we lean on each other and, and we understand. And, you know, like I said before, I can't teach everybody what they need to be taught. I can only teach you what I know and what I've learned. Right. I, you, I can't tell you everything you need to learn. I can tell you what I've learned and you need to learn what you need to learn. Um, I can help you get there. I have limitations. I'm human also, you know, but um, that's, that's why we're doing this. So the open communication back and you emailing back at the tongue speaks life.com sign up for a newsletter, not the newsletter, but just sign up and um, email us, email me questions, email both of us. Um, and we'll definitely get back to you. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we love we love questions and we love discussing things. That's what we do. That's the whole reason why this show started in the first place. And you might be the subject of the next podcast. You never know. So your question might be what Me? we focus on, not, not you. Oh, <laughs> I figure I might be yeah. I might be on under fire. You know what? Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe we quiz him one day. Yeah. That'll be good. I might have, I might have ticked off some people from some, <laughs> some of the comments I made. Well. I, I know I did. So, <laughs> so, well, that's another topic for another show. So, yeah. Anyway, so as we wrap this up, uh, it's important that we look back at the book of Daniel. Um, it's just one of the books that points to something happening in the future. And we're going to tie that into Revelation. And don't just stop at what I've told you about Daniel. Open the book. Read it. It's it's super interesting. It is story. a fun book. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's really because I know like if, if if you aren't familiar with that book, and you you hear the Old Testament and you're like, oh, boring. Because you know s- some of the Old Testament is hard to get through. It some really of it is. Really is. Yeah. Daniel's not one of those books. Daniel is extremely exciting. It's a very action packed, very fun historical book. And I and I emphasize historical because it is history. Yeah, and we're we're seeing things thousands of years later things that were talked about we're seeing now which is crazy yeah right? so anyway that's another show uh that was a good one yes it was even though spoilers yeah uh, we're yeah. and i'm sure there's gonna be many many more spoilers that's okay that's what we do here <laughs> <laughs> so until next time come to us and we'll spoil it for you yeah, yeah. <laughs> ask us a question i'll tell you the answer yeah so as any movie you want to see ask me i'll tell yeah, you what happens at the we'll end i'll tell you the ending will save you yeah. a lot of money <laughs> two hours <laughs> i'll save two hours of your day time and money yeah <laughs> so until next time jb thanks for coming as absolutely always. all right man we'll see you next time take it easy <laughs>